we kept going up and coming down and going back up and uh, coming down. We thought there weren't any place, maybe on the runway, for us to land. Annie Edwards is one of 134 passengers on a Delta flight from Florida that circles a violent thunderstorm over the Dallas-Fort Worth airport. From looking out the window, you can see that it was raining. Because we did come down low enough where we thought we were going to land and we had to go back up. After circling the field the final time, the pilots have no idea they're approaching a monstrous microburst. But at a critically low altitude, they sense that something is wrong. Suddenly, a huge force from above pushes the plane like a giant unseen hand. Everybody was holding on because they knew something was wrong. The pilots gun the engines with all 130,000 pounds of thrust. It is no use. The fire was approaching. I could feel the heat, but it did not burn, not said. So I say God was there with me. Miraculously, Annie is left dangling in the severed tail section with 26 other survivors. But the bodies of passengers lay strewn across a field. I heard nobody scream. I heard nobody cry out or anything. It was complete silence. The violent thunderstorm had undoubtedly caused the crash. But what part? Wind shear was suspected, but the facts didn't add up. Investigators combed through the wreckage of Flight 191 and pored over the data from earlier crashes. The culprit is shown in this computer animation, a savage breed of wind shear called the microburst. Wet, heavy air that drops at up to 60 miles an hour, slowing a plane so it loses the lift it needs to stay aloft. It's now believed that microbursts caused half of all air disasters before that fateful day. They're sudden and you get no warning. Uh, you can fly for 30 years and never have an experience with one and all of a sudden you find yourself uh, out of ideas and airspeed in a very crucial point of the flight. 